Yeah. Now, I want to uh, define the important concept of coordinate vectors with respect to a basis. Why do we want to do that? Uh, vector spaces uh, can be abstract. Yeah, they can consist of functions or uh, matrices or uh, vectors or all kinds of things constitute vector spaces. But in order to uh, do computations in a vector space, we have to set up a coordinate system. Just like in, in analytic geometry, we set up a coordinate system, the Cartesian coordinate system, and then uh, geometric objects are defined by equations. We manipulate equations and then deduce nice things about geometry. Yeah. So this is what happens in analytic geometry. Uh, uh, geometric objects are represented by equations. We manipulate equations using algebra and derive properties of the geometric shapes. Now we have we want to study abstract vector spaces of functions or matrices or all kinds of things. And uh, in order to uh, do computation in abstract vector space, we have to set up a coordinate system. And that coordinate system is set up by using a basis. So every, every element of a vector space, whether it is a function or a matrix or a vector, will acquire coordinate vector and it will be unique vector. Yeah. And then we can do computations using these coordinate vectors. So it is, it is defined with respect to a basis. So let's see how it is done. So take a finite dimensional vector space of dimension n by ordered basis. Okay, basis is not ordered by definition. Yeah, basis just consists of linearly independent vectors whose linear span is the whole space. So we don't impose any ordering, but in order to construct coordinates of vectors, we must fix an order. So by an ordered basis of V, we mean a sequence v1, v2, vn of distinct vectors so that these are linearly independent and the dimension of the vector space is n. So we, we take a basis and then order the vectors in that basis. Just like in three-dimensional vector space, we often think of ijk as the ordered basis where ijk are the unit vectors along the direction of x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. So similarly, if I have an abstract vector space, I pick a basis and give an order to the basis elements, that is the ordered basis. Now take any vector, I want to assign coordinates to that vector. Then because V1 up to Vn is a basis, I can write U as a unique linear combination of V1 up to Vn, as A1, V1 plus A2, V2 plus A and Vn, where Ais are scalars. The field of scalars I am writing as F, field of scalars can be real, uh, field or complex field or it can be finite field okay, or field of rational numbers. So I fix a field of scalars for my vector space, fix an ordered basis, then every vector is uniquely determined as a linear combination. So I get these scalars A1, A2, An. Yeah? So input is a vector U in V, output are these scalars. Okay? Output are these scalars U, A1 up to An. They are called the coordinates of the vector u. This is what happens in any any uh, um, uh, vector in R three also, right? I, I fix a I fix a vector and then find its coordinates x y z. But then this this vector u is actually x i plus y j plus z k. Okay, so i j i j k is an ordered basis of three elements of uh, three a basis standard basis of R three and I fix that order, then I derive the coordinates of vectors. Okay, so that vector is the tip, that point, those coordinates are indicating the coordinates of the tip of the vector. Okay, so we carry out this process now abstractly by fixing an order basis, take a vector in V and write it as a linear combination of the vectors in the ordered basis and then this collect the scalars. Okay then the coordinate vector of u with respect to this ordered basis b is simply the column vector a1, a2, a n. Yeah, so we have taken the process in R3, abstracted it for any finite dimensional vector space. So u could be a function, right? u could be sine x or cosine x. And then we uh, suppose I take sine x and cosine x. Of course, we can prove that they are linearly independent sine x and cosine x are linearly independent functions. 
So I can now take an arbitrary function, which is a linear combination of sine x and cosine x, and talk about its coordinate vector. Just like here, we have abstract vector space and ordered basis, and then AIs are represent, representing u in a unique way, and I extract the, uh, the coefficients and make a vector. Okay. This vector is a column vector. It has n components, so it is in Fn. So if my vector space was real vector space, I am producing a vector in the ordinary real vector space Rn. Okay, and this vector, this this uh, coordinate vector is represented by u. And since it it depends on the basis b, we put b as a subscript. Okay, so the coordinate vector of u with respect to the basis b is a one up to a n. So input input is a vector in abstract vector space. Output is a vector in a in a, in a concrete vector space Fn. Okay, so if my vector space was and uh, say three dimensional, if V was three dimensional real vector space, then this this correspondence will give me a, give me vectors in R three. So input will be a vector in V and output will be vector in R three. And the three elements are coordinates of V with respect to a fixed basis B. So I have put coordinates in my abstract vector space, and the coordinates are taken from Fn. Okay. Now this process you can easily show that if I if I take two vectors U and V, add them, and then take the coordinate, then this is the sum of coordinates of U and V. Similarly, if I take a scalar multiple of V. And then take the coordinates with respect to B. That is A times the coordinate of v, uh, v with respect to B. Okay, yeah. So this is uh, suppose I I, uh, I I define this map from V to F n. Take a vector V and T V is equal to coordinate of V with respect to an ordered basis. Okay. So these two facts are simply saying. That T is a linear transformation. Okay, they are saying T is a linear transformation because uh, this the first equation says that T respects addition. Second equation says T respects scalar multiplication. So the process of coordinateization of a vector space gives me a linear transformation. V mapping to T V, where T V is the coordinate vector of V with respect to B, is a linear transformation. Yeah. So here I fixed the basis V. Now suppose I take another basis C. Yeah. So that will also produce coordinate vectors, but they will be with respect to C. The question arises: What is the relation between coordinate vectors of U with respect to one basis and the coordinate vectors of U with respect to another basis? Yeah, they are both column vectors, right? So from V, I have two two pathways, F n and again F n. So here I take U and map it to the coordinate vector of U with respect to B, but I can take a vector uh, basis vector C, uh, basis C, and associate the coordinate of U with respect to C. So what is the connection between this vector? And this vector, so that connection will be defined by a matrix, and which will be mapping vectors in F n to vectors in F n. Okay, so if I know coordinates with respect to one basis, how do I find coordinates with respect to another basis? Of course, you can write the definition, but we can have an algorithm that once I know uh, coordinates of a vector with respect to one fixed basis, I can determine the coordinate with respect to another basis. Yeah. By an algorithm, so I want to describe that algorithm to you. Okay, this is the algorithm is is based on a matrix, which is called the change of basis matrix or transition matrix from C to B. So B, uh, so C and B are both bases of the same vector space, and I want to now write a matrix which represents change of basis. Yeah, so the change of basis from C to B is a n by n matrix. Okay. So, how to construct this n by n matrix? I am de describing the column vectors of this matrix. So, take uh, so b b b. Remember what was what was b? B b had b was consisting of v one up to v n. Okay, and c is consisting of u one up to u n. Yeah. So, 
the uh, the vectors uh, u u1 yeah take the uh, coordinate with respect to b take u2 which is coordinate with respect to b and then take the coordinate vector of un with respect to b okay so let's let me recall um, uh, b is v1 up to vn v is v1 to vn and c is u1 to un we are passing from c to b okay we want to change we are passing from c to b so this is a transition matrix from c to b so in this the transition matrix i am taking coordinate vectors of these basis vectors with respect to v1 up to vn yeah i can find coordinate vector of any vector with respect to any basis yeah so the the elements of c which are uis i can write their coordinate vectors with respect to b and the coordinate vectors have n components so i get these n called column vectors u1 b u2 b m and b and this is called the transition matrix from c to b okay so uh, so i started with a basis c and the elements of c i am writing in terms of basis b by using their coordinate vectors so these are coordinate vectors of c uh, elements of c in, with respect to basis b okay so this is called mcb transition matrix from c to b so keep keep that in mind how to construct transition matrix uh, when we are transiting from vectors uh, in c to vectors in b so take vectors of c and write their coordinate vector with respect to the basis b and take these n column vectors and construct the matrix so here is the result which says that Uh, the coordinate vector of u with respect to the basis c okay if i operate this matrix which is transition from c to b will produce the coordinate vector of u with respect to b yeah so we have these two bases uh, c and b yeah okay is this fine now so uh, so it is saying that input is coordinate vector of u with respect to basis c the output is coordinate vector of the same vector with respect to basis b then this this uh, the, the coordinates with respect to basis b can be obtained from coordinate vectors with respect to basis c by pre multiplying this coordinate vector with this transition matrix mcb okay so let us let us prove that so first write down the coordinate vector of u with c okay suppose this is the coordinate vector what does it mean it means u is equal to a a1 yeah a1 and the vector c consists of u1 uh, plus a n u n okay that is u then the coordinate vector of u with respect to c is a1 up to n this column vector okay so so this is the equation yeah but taking coordinate vectors is a linear transformation so co taking coordinate vectors of this linear combination of u i is yeah is really a1 coordinate vector of u1 with respect to b an coordinate vector of un with respect to b so what is it this is a linear combination of column vectors of mcb u1 b un b they are coordinate vectors of mcb and i am taking this linear combination okay so 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 therefore this is really mcb acting on a1 up to an right this is mcb acting on a1 up to an this matrix acting on this vector is also the linear combination of column vectors of the transition matrix so we have proved the formula that coordinate vectors of u with respect to basis b can be obtained from coordinate vectors of u with respect to c by pre multiplying by the transition matrix from c to u okay yeah okay let's uh, take take an example okay so take v3 take v equal to the three dimensional uh, cartesian space r3 and i have two bases v1 v2 v3 these three vectors you can check they are linear independent and these are the standard basis vectors e1 e2 en e3 are the standard basis vectors so i have these two basis vectors and i want to write the transition matrix from one basis to another so take these two ordered bases v1 up to v3 and u1 up to u3 okay they what is the transition matrix mcb 
I, I write vectors in C, okay, and take their coordinate vectors with respect to B. That is MCB. So U1, take this vector U1. U1 has to be written. The first column vectors of the transition matrix will be coordinate vector of U1. So I have to write U1 as a unique linear combination of these three vectors. So 1, 0, 0 can be written as V1 minus V2 plus V plus 0 times V3. So this is the column vector, which is the coordinate vector of U1 with respect to with respect to B. Similarly, I write the coordinate vector of U2 with respect to B, and the third column is coordinate vector of U3 with respect to B. Okay, yeah. So let's uh, take this. Uh, this is the transition matrix. Before I can start converting coordinate vectors with respect to one basis to another, I have to first write the transition matrix. Then I take arbitrary vector t two three two three four. Yeah. Then the uh, coordinate vectors of uh, two three four with respect to C. C is this standard basis vectors, and therefore coordinate vector of U with respect to C is this vector itself. Yeah. Now I want to write the coordinate vector of U with respect to this new basis B. So you pull out the transition matrix and operate this on the coordinate vector of U with respect to C. I get two one one. So this says that this vector is really two times V one plus V two plus V three. And you can check this is true. Okay, so I explained the algorithm to convert the coordinate vectors with respect to one basis into coordinate vectors with respect to another basis. And so this is an algorithm. We find the uh, transition matrix, and then I can apply the uh, multiply the transition matrix to the old coordinate vector. The output will be new coordinate vector with respect to new basis. Okay. Yeah. Now let's uh, uh, let, let us observe this very important fact that I have these two bases C and B. I can talk about transition matrix from C to B or uh, transition matrix from B to C. Okay. This proposition says that these two matrices are inverses of each other. MCB, the transition matrix from C to B, is inverse of transition matrix from B to C. So in particular, it says. That the transition matrices are invertible. Yeah, transition matrices are invertible, and we know their inverse also. Yeah, so inverse will be another transition matrix. So let us let us prove that. Okay, so to prove that this this matrix this matrix is inverse of this matrix, I just multiply these two matrices in two ways, or even one way is enough. We have seen that and prove that it is the identity matrix. So take M to be M MBC and take N to be NCB. And I want to multiply these two and show that it is identity. Yeah, we need to show that MN equal to NM equal to identity. So to prove that some matrix is identity, I can operate that matrix yeah, on arbitrary vectors and show that I get the same vector back. To prove that MN is identity, I will operate MN on arbitrary vector and show that I get the same vector. Yeah. So, so take any vector in V, write the coordinates with respect to B. Okay. So coordinate with respect to B is, is the transition matrix MCB times coordinate with respect to C. Okay. And coordinate with respect to C is the transition matrix M, yeah, MBC operating on coordinate with respect to B. Okay. So therefore, if I take any arbitrary vector, then the coordinate vector UB is N times UC, but uh, UC is equal to M times UB. So UB is equal to NM times UB. So therefore, NM has to be identity matrix because this is equal to identity matrix operating on UB. Okay, right. So therefore, uh, these two matrices, when they are acting on arbitrary vectors in V, the, the answer is identity map. Okay. And similarly, uh, we can prove that MN operating on UC is equal to uh, UC itself. So therefore, MN and NM, they multiply to identity matrix. So inverse of a transition matrix is again a transition matrix. A yeah, transition matrix from C to B is inverse of transition matrix from B to C. Okay. So transition matrices are, in, in particular, they are invertible matrices.